whereas Christian culture and God's culture makes you alpha. But it makes you alpha for God's purpose, not your own purpose, not your own vicious thoughts and your own selfish greed and your own licentiousness. No, those things must die. Your sins, you must die. You must live for Christ. You see what I'm saying? So it just creates like the perfect civilization for the protection of women, the protection of children, and of course males. To be men, but also moderate their tendency to want to... Moderate their tendency, their fallen natures. And of course, it also raises women to be alpha females as well, to raise their children as Christ raises them. To submit to their husband in love, if he's not a believer, or he's not the priest, or he's not doing his duties in Christ, to respectfully help raise him. Sometimes a woman is called to raise their husband, but in a respectful way. Not to do his work for him, but to encourage him to be the priest of the house. Right? You could take a you could take a a, a, a faithful, honest man, who maybe is not used to being the priest of the house, and respectfully change him so that he feels encouraged to pray. You could start prayer and one day you could say uh honey would you would you like to pray for us and after he prays he said that was really wonderful really appreciated that i mean you girls like it when your husbands move slowly on you why do you think you can move fast on your husband and just command him to change this or that you hate it too when people do that to you Ah, you see that? Oh, but it's okay because you're a woman. Oh, it's okay. You can beat on other people, but you can't be beat upon yourself. You can demand that everybody slow with you and be patient with you, but you can't tolerate that to your husband. You can't give that to your husband. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's called hypocrisy. <clears throat> And honest men and real men will say, that's very hypocritical and that's very painful and that's hurtful and that's hateful. Of course, most men <clears throat> won't say that way. They'll say, stop freaking persecuting me. But that's what they're saying. They're, what they're saying internally in their heart, they're saying, you're being very hateful and being hypocritical and I love you and I want to do something and I want to make you happy, but the way you're doing it is so vengeful and so painful. But men won't usually say that, but you have to understand that's what they're saying. And as a man loves Christ more, he begins to open up. He becomes, he becomes what you're seeking for. He does open his heart up. He does become vulnerable because he realizes that he must do that to Christ. He must submit himself to Christ. He must become vulnerable to Christ. And by extension, you can see his tenderness. You can see his heart, the, one, the heart that you want so much. But he won't give you because you nag at him and you try to tell him to do this and that when you don't do it. You demand love, but you won't give him respect, even though God commands you to respect your husband. You're commanded. It's not your choice. You have no choice. Just like your husband has no choice to love you and be patient with you when you're acting like a little child and a little bitch. Don't tell me girls can't be bitchy. You girls all know. You guys, y'all can be bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's no big secret, trust me. <laughs> this is what's good about the internet too. It exposes girls. It doesn't let them hide behind image. Because there's so many videos exposing how shallow some women are. Like gold diggers and, you know, etc. I mean, it, it exposes them. So they can't hide behind the image of perfection, which a lot of girls try to do. We know you want your man's heart, 
but the way to it is not by demanding it from him. Just like a man wants to make love to you, but you know the best way is not just say, I want sex now. You think that's going to be effective? Give me a freaking break. Then you just say, I want your heart now. Yeah, you think that's not going to be effective? You have to woo it out of him. You have to create the environment where he, he feels that he will not be injured to expose his vulnerable heart to you. And the more you encourage him in faith and to love Jesus and to love the Lord and heaven and to love God and to, 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 to pray and open himself. And, and hey, when he prays, encourage him. Give him a little treat. He said, oh my gosh, that was so beautiful when you did that i felt so protected yeah and now you're starting you see i felt so protected i i felt so led i felt led i felt i felt like wow i'm married to a true subject partner you see what i'm saying give him a little credit give him a little praise then he's gonna be like oh man wow i better pray more often <laughs> even though he may be he may be not the most faithful person in terms of God, I mean, faithful to you and, and, and ethics, etc. But he may not have a life with God, which you make you, you which you crave, you know, in your soul. You you want your husband to be the head, the priest of the house, because that's what he's commanded to be, and you he's supposed to lead you and the children in spiritual warfare and be the top protector of the house. He's supposed to. And we know women generally are good-hearted. We know they're not. Wicked and evil. That if they have a husband that does those things, they will appreciate that generally. Of course, there are some that will twist that in their mind thinking that, you know, he's just trying to be, you know, spiritually, uh, morally posturing over them. But that's just twisted up in your emotions. You know, in the end, you want it. You want that husband to take that leadership role. Just many times they don't because they're not encouraged by society. They're not encouraged by anyone else in the family. They're not encouraged by you or your their children. So they just don't see the need. But if you don't have prayer, if you don't have the priest in the house, so to speak, not the Catholic priest, right? The husband has a priest. Your family will start to disintegrate. It will. His love for you will fade over time. Because it's not being tied to you by his faithfulness to God in Christ, which of course, then your marriage and covenant is connected to. If it's just about physical attraction and how fun your marriage is, he will start not loving you soon, just as you will start not loving him. Even though love is a verb and you're supposed to actively do it, you will start emotionally deluding yourself, thinking that it's a feeling. And he will too. But that's because over a daily periods, he wasn't encouraged to be the priest of the house. You don't have to do his job for him. Just encourage him to do it, and when he does it, give him lots of praise. Give him lots of praise. Make him feel good. You love it when you get a lot of praise. Why wouldn't he? You see? It's just, it's, it's, it's about breaking out of the brainwashing that men are evil and the demonization of men, realizing this is another human being who is also called by God to be with you and to love him, respect him. Control yourself. Control your emotions. Be in control of your feelings. Their feelings don't, are not you. Their feelings don't make you. Your feelings don't define you. Your feelings confuse you. So control them. See what the Word of God says. If your husband is not going to church and he's not faithful, etc., hey, don't condemn him. Be patient. Start in small ways. Hey, how about, how about at the dinner table, why don't you volunteer to pray first if he's not really a churchgoer or whatever? And then over time, they say, oh, have your children. Honey, would you like to pray? And then at some point, say, honey, you know, can I ask you to pray? Or if he doesn't like to pray in front of people, then say, honey, can you just pray for me? I'm going to a doctor's office. You know, I, don't, I hope I don't have cancer. 
Or, you know, my friend has cancer, can we pray for him? You know, you know what I'm saying? Find an avenue. Because guess what? Prayer softens men. You want a strong man. You want an alpha male. But you want him to pray too. Because it softens him. Prayer is being vulnerable to God. So if your man is in the habit of prayer, he's in the habit of, being, of opening himself up to God and asking for help. Right? Things that you like. You want vulnerability. You want him to ask for help when he needs help. But if you create an environment where he's demonized for that, then he won't do that. He won't be vulnerable to you. He won't ask for help. Ah, you see what I'm saying? So having a praying husband is huge benefit to you ladies. But you got to encourage them. You can't force it because they're taught that praying is kind of a girly thing and it's kind of wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> even though that's ridiculous even though that's absolutely absurd they're also brainwashing that way too but it's in 100% your benefit to have a praying husband not only will they be more faithful to you not only will they have massively lower uh, divorce rates not only will they be more compassionate and more patient I mean you'll get tons of benefits if you have a praying husband tons so it is in your own interest to encourage him in prayer, to just be nice with him as he's starting to pray. Just be nice. Just be real encouraging. Just really love him up when he's doing that. And as that becomes one year, two years, it's, it's a, right now it's a habit. Now it's a habit. Now he can't live with prayer, without prayer. Now prayer has become part of your culture, you see what I'm saying? And now you're being used by God to allow your husband to step into his proper role. You're not used by God to dominate him. You're used to help raise him if he's not at that level yet, you know, because we know a lot of sisters, <clears throat> their husbands are, you know, not really faithful to God. They may be faithful to you, but not faithful to God. And that drives you nuts, and that's why he's not vulnerable to you, and that's why he hasn't opened up to you, and that's why he, at this point, probably maybe resents you. Because he feels it's being forced down his throat. <clears throat> and men will naturally Repel against that. Re rebel against that. So just be calm. Be patient. Control your emotions. Work slow. Fast is slow. Slow is fast. Slow is fast. Fast is slow. That's always the first thing you learn in bushcrafting and anything. Slow is fast. Fast is slow. Don't try to change them overnight. Try to change them over three years. Bring your timeline to three years, not one night. Don't demand change by tomorrow. Demand, in your mind, put the time horizon to three years. Oh, but that's so long. You took way more than three years, girl. <laughs> God been patient with you. Come on. You know, you, you know, you know the king is right. You know I'm telling you this because I love you. And I want you to be happy. I want you to experience the true joy and the true blessing of the blessing of husband and wife because it's the most joyous, the most powerful. And no, you're not stuck with the man that you have now. Because if you put your time around in just three years and you're patient and you control your feelings and emotions, don't let them control you and you encourage him, he will change in three years. You will be victorious for God. God will use you as the instrument of peace to allow him to come to his fruit, true fruition and become the man that you always wanted. And vice versa for, for men as well. Put the time horizon for three years. At least, I mean, that's the least you can do. Your girl, your girl is overly emotional and she acts like a baby all the time but pretends that she's an adult and you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, be patient. A lot of girls like that, especially girls who have not confronted reality and not done hard things. They're spoiled. They're like little children. They live in delusion. Like, like anybody who doesn't go through any reality checks and hard stuff and get beaten up. Usually girls have never gotten in a fight. They've never got beaten up. They've never been dominated. 
So they're like babies. So have compassion for them. Slowly work on them. Patient. Everything I say doesn't mean it's not personal, okay? They may say very hurtful things because they f sort through problems verbally. And I know in the man's world, you don't, we don't say that stuff to each other. Otherwise, there's a fight and usually there's knives come out and you kill each other. <laughs> but girls don't do that. Okay? So if they say hurtful things, just let it run off you like water. If they say stupid stuff, just let it roll off. Not a big deal. It's not personal. And help them. Help them unlock their epigenetics. Help them be more adventurous. Help them become stronger. Hey, start, start exercising with them slowly. Start becoming more physical with them slow, slowly. You know, in terms of exercise or working out or, you know, doing things more active in your life. Become more active lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? That means become more physical, active. Change your patterns up. Keep progressing. Don't do the same damn thing. I know we can wear the same thing. I wear the same damn thing every day. I got three sets of the same pants. I got ten sets of the same freaking shirt. Other than when I'm in the King's Report, then I'm dressing in all different ways. But normally, you see me, I'm dressing the same pants, same shirt, etc. Right? Because I got my whole system set. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I know we, guys can we can do that. But girls don't like that. Keep it interesting. Keep it exciting. Try new things with her. Push the boundaries a little bit. Learn how to play around and joke. Try to make her laugh. As you become more, you know, embracing of the people of people of British culture, start bringing her in. You know, slowly go shooting with her. Slowly, you know, train with her. You know, study some knife fighting. Do some trapping together. Teach her how to defend herself. Use pepper spray, you know, whatever. These things all are little ways that you can get physical contact in a connective way. And the more of that you have, guys, then you get what you want because you're going to have a lot more skinship with her, which will then prepare her sexually to have a better sex life with you. But you need to have a lot of skinship with your woman before you have the actual intimacy and the sexual contact. You can't just jump straight for it. You have to have lots of skinship, a lot of, what do they call it? A lot of, um, a lot of, seducing before that and that of course creates a very healthy environment for your kids because they can see a strong marriage and strong daddy money love each other and they, they, they can't keep their hands off each other they can't keep themselves because they love each other but again that is usually guided by the man the man has to be skillful there's not one time when the queen passed by she was she was explaining to this to the boys because i do it just so naturally in front of them to explain to them, boys, when you get married, you too, you have to create lots of skinship. Did you see how daddy just walked by mommy? And then when he's walking by mommy, he's, he's got his hand on her hip. And she's explaining this to our boys because like men literally have to be explained this. They don't, if they don't do this naturally, they don't know. You never let your wife pass you by without trying to grab her, you know, or try to grab her leg or her ankle, or you have to constantly show her. I'm not, it's not, it's not annoying, okay? Stop thinking it's annoying. You, it's, you're showing you always are desiring that she's, she's desirable and she's, she's the best thing in the world and that you're so thankful you have her. There's like, the queen cannot walk by me without me trying to, catch her some way <laughs> you understand but she loves it if I don't do that something is weird <laughs> you see what I'm saying and I was just the other day we were just after training 
and I, you know, I even, but just, I just naturally, whenever the queen is there, I've always had my hand on her hip, I always have her hand on my waist. You know what I'm saying? I'm always lovingly in skin contact with her. That day I had my hand on her, you know, on her tissue. And a daddy, and, a, and, 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 and you know, I was just walking by, and the kids, and she stopped, and she stopped the kids and said, did you see, did you see how daddy's always, you know, <laughs> always having a skinship with mommy? You see that? You boys have to remember that when you get married. Don't expect to have this cold, never touch skinship relationship with your wife, and then all of a sudden, when you want to, you know, be intimate with her and have, you know, absent sex contact that all of a sudden she's just dying to do it. And she explained to this boys because they need to understand this. It doesn't come that way. You need lots of skinship, lots of skinship, lots of skinship. So much. How do we get into that? My goodness. We, see, this is what happens. We take up the cross. We follow him. God creates good men, good women. Just be patient with one another. Be patient. Be loving. Be respectful. Don't worry. They're going to come around. If you keep it up, they'll come around. They'll come around to what God wants them to be. God will use you in a way that you never thought could be possible. You'll help your woman become the woman that God wants her to be. You'll help your man become the man God wants him to be. You'll be part of that process of co-creation with God. You'll be invested in one another. And guess what? You'll have a tremendous Tremendous marriage, which God, of course, wants and intended for you. All right, folks, let's take a short break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us.